everything set up for you. I got everything set up for you. So, so you're good to go. We we ready to do this, American trucker. I I am ready. All right, yes. all right. Let's uh let's get into this right quick. All right. So let's see. Let me see. How how am I going to start you off? We we going to start you off like this. We we going to we going to bring you up on. We're gonna bring up you. We're gonna bring up a video from YouTube to to bring you in. Look at that, Brittany. Good. Brittany in pink. Let's check this out. You got five things I wish I knew after and CDL here, you hear training. Some strange noises. We have goats. Are you seriously eating the broom? These guys eat everything. I think that one's eating a plastic container. Yes, I think that one's eating a Rubbermaid. They will eat literally <laughs> anything that they can get their teeth on. These must be your goats. I really wanted to do a video for you guys because they I've had a lot of requests goat. to do videos about <laughs> things that I've learned over the years in the semi truck. So I think I'm going to start with a little mini series on. <laughs> yes. Do you want to say hi to the YouTube group? I, I guess not. So I wanted to do a series on things that I wished I would have known my first year as a truck driver. So to yes, start that sir. out. Here are yes, sir. Yes, sir. American trucker. Yes, sir. We got American truck of trucker Brittany in pink in the house. Howdy, howdy, everybody. What's going on there, little lady? What an applause. Oh, my God. What a welcome. Yes. Um, not much. I'm on home time right now. So I've been doing a lot of cleaning and kind of getting the house in shape and ready for Jordan's birthday tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. Well, but, uh, yeah. Well, tell Jordan, whoever that is, your kid. Significant other. Oh, no, significant, significant other. other. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, tell Mr. Jordan yes. there. I said happy birthday. You say his birthday's tomorrow? It is. Well, officially, it was a couple of weeks ago, but you know, the life of a truck driver. So we kind of push things around and celebrate on different dates. I got you. I got you. So his, so he's a truck driver too? No, I, he's actually assisting me with all of the media stuff. I kind of got overwhelmed when all the channels started growing. And um, I actually, I stole him from Amazon. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know, Am I, we, you know, Amazon is, whoo, I hear Amazon is a beast to work for though, for real. Oh, they are. Yeah. He was uh, one of the head security managers for the site and mm -hmm. that's how we met. I was bringing a load in long story short. A few years later, I end up saying, I'll tell you what, we're, we're generating enough revenue here. How about I just hire you? You help me with all the media and you know, we can help other people out there and in the trucking world. So. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, tell a round of applause for that. One. Yeah. So you say, yo, bro, you don't need to work for uh, you. You don't need to work for them. You can come and work for me. And we got the best of both worlds going on over here, man. That's what's up. Brittany in pink. Well, Miss Brittany in pink, thank you for bring, uh, bringing you, yourself, and everything about you to the show. I really do appreciate it. Why don't you tell our listeners out there a little bit about yourself and where you come from? Absolutely. Well, my name is Brittany Richardson. I have a couple of YouTube channels. One, Brittany Richardson on YouTube. The other most people know me from, and that's American Truckers. And I am, of course, a truck driver. I've been driving a truck for just over eight years now, and I really enjoy it, especially lease purchase. I just started my lease purchase last year with RTI, and I absolutely love it. No regrets. I wish I would have known about the power of lease purchase sooner because I am so happy. Well, you you know what? Now I, I I'm not a fan of leasing. I, I really I, I'm really not. And, and you're leasing from you're you're leasing from the company you drive for, right? I am. I do not like. I did not like leases prior to RTI. Mm -hmm. Um, what what I really liked about RTI was a lot of the negative points with the other companies, like 
as far as roping you into a long-term, you know, situation with the truck where right. if you leave the company, right? they're sticking you with a truck payment after you leave. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, RTI defeated a lot of that stuff. It's walk away lease. Um, no balloon came at the end. They reimbursed you for all of that. And they were honest with me. The only company I have found, I've had so many bad experiences with trucking companies. I used to, I've still got a bunch of videos on the channel of all my bad experiences. And um, when I got to RTI, they're like, okay, and over here in the fine print, it says this, and just be aware of this. And, you know, so you can make the best choice. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Well, at least at, at least you 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 did your research. You know, you you did the trial and error. You did your research, and you finally you finally sat with a company that you felt that was good for you, right? Exactly. As should any good driver. If you got a good head on your shoulders, get the research, call around, ask for details. I was watching your, one of your last podcasts, and you were talking to. Was it PNS? I think it was PNS. PNS, yes. Um, transportation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I loved how you just dug in and asked for every detail to, you know, get all of the facts. Every driver should be doing that. Thank you, thank you. Hold on, right quick. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, I I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Um, uh, uh, watching my channel. You know, I came. I came across your actually. Actually, I came across yours a while back, and I wasn't sure what was your channel was about because it, as of course, is amply named American Trucker, and I thought. It, I, mm -hmm. I thought that was like, okay, like a magazine. Like it was a magazine and they was doing a profile on you. And all of a sudden it's, it, it's a whole bunch of videos on you. And I was like, oh, okay. She must be the, she must be the ambassador for American Trucker then. So where did you come up with the name for your YouTube? So the importance of the name, for one, I wanted to separate it from myself because I do have my own vlog channel that, you know, captures my life away from the truck for mm -hmm. people that want to watch that. But I wanted that channel to be specifically about trucking. And my passion is in, to inspire others to do things they never thought possible. And, you know, I couldn't think of a better name than American Truckers to incorporate everybody. You know, I could have called it Brittany and Pink. I do have a Facebook page by the hat. Right. Because I drive a breast cancer awareness truck, do all that stuff. But I just, I wanted to be inclusive to everybody. Make it about truckers here in America and what their life's about. Mm -hmm. And my ultimate goal is to start connecting with truck drivers. And I've connected with a few behind the scenes. We just don't have anything set in stone yet. But I'm hoping to get cameras in their trucks and, you know, start pick, grabbing a little glimpse of the life of each driver across the country, kind of catch the highlights um, and kind of go that direction with the channel. That way new drivers especially can get in and see what it's like and get tips and, okay. you know, connect with some of us that have been out here a while. That's what's so. up. That's what's up. So where, so Brittany, where, where, where are you from? Where, where are you from? I am out of Kansas city, Kansas. Okay. Okay. And absolutely love it. Love Ohio too, but um, <laughs> yeah, I I love Kansas. But you gotta love, you you, you gotta rep, you gotta represent where you're from. So go Royals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, yes, and Chiefs recently. All right. So Kansas City, Kansas. How how was it growing up then? I you you. You, before you got into trucking, you you had a whole bunch of naysayers that 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 didn't think that that you I guess they considered you too girly girly for for trucking. What, 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 they how, did. How you felt about yeah, that? Yeah, they did. I, you know, it was discouraging because you know here I was I was in law enforcement prior to truck driving. I worked for a couple of fire departments and uh, combined campus police and fire department. Okay. And I've always been one that's up for a challenge. And, you know, I, I'd always 
look to survive the truck drivers. I was intrigued by the thought of the open road. Plus, you're not getting shot at out every day, so that helps. <laughs> but, um, no, I had mentioned to some friends in the area that, you know, I want to go to truck school. And I think I can do this thing. And they were like, oh, my God, no, you're making the mistake. I'm trying to save you the tears, the frustration. Because I was all set, right? I was going to quit my job, go to truck school. And I was playing it smart. I built up my paid time off, everything, cover the school. But, you know, nevertheless, I'm hearing these, you know, voices of my friends in the back of my mind going, you can't make it. It's a huge mistake. You're going to fail miserably. You won't have a job. And I had to overcome that. I really did during truck school and just stay focused on studying and getting through because, um, it was really discouraging when it almost when it, people you know and trust mm-hmm. are saying stuff like that. Like you, you're not going to be able to make it. You won't be able to back. Um, you're going to hate the life of a truck driver. Blah blah blah. And you know it's powerful. It affects the person. Yeah, it does. I mean, especially these and these the people that you that you that you thought that was to have your back. You know, they, they supposed to support you in, in whatever endeavor is this, this family we talking about, right? Not just, not just friends. Now, if it was just friends, then I can understand, you know, like, Hey, whatever. But Mm -hmm. this is like, your your actually family members. That's, that's discouraging you from, from obtaining your goal. Yeah. The family wasn't as harsh as my friends were, but you know, they were, they were skeptical. You know, they really didn't think I was making a good decision. Well, look at look so. look look at you look at you now. Eight years deep, uh, American trucker, uh, ambassador for for RT. What is it? RTI. Um, mm-hmm. Over over thirty some odd thousand subscribers. I mean, you know, you 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 doing the damn thing. Speaking of uh, being an ambassador with RTI, how did that come about? So I was having a lot of trouble with local trucking companies and big, long story, a lot of illegal stuff going on. And, um, it was a mess. It was a mess. So I quit my job and I kept hearing positive things from drivers. I saw a lot of drivers coming into one of our dedicated routes to pick up loads and kept seeing these RTI drivers and every one of them seemed extremely happy of course you know how that is yeah out on the road a yeah. driver's gonna say whatever they can exactly to, to try to get you through. try to get you come on and get that referral bonus yeah this is the this is the best thing since sliced bread and in the and in the background you come on and that person gets uh maybe about a thousand fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar referral bonus and they they liable to say anything anything to get you on with the company and then when you find get on with the company you find out that well in your experience you find out that that company ain't all that cracked up to be exactly so i kind of put the word out because i knew a lot of people at this customer and started you know just asking around hey his how have the drivers been you know coming into the company do they look happy have they said anything and I kept getting positive feedback. I saw a couple of commercials after that for the company and the commercials were hilarious. I still go back and watch the commercials just because of they're, they're very transparent, but they're humorous. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh my God, I can relate to this. So they said something in one of the commercials. They said, we don't have a bunch of bulletproof glass. We don't have security here. The door is open. So they said, if you want to talk to us, walk in off the street and come talk to us. So right up to a dispatcher, recruiter, whatever. Okay. I'm like, really? So I'm going to test this out. So I did one day, literally walked right in and found somebody who pointed me back to recruiting, went back and ended up sparking a conversation with um, the media director of RTI. I was telling her what I was going through with some of the other companies. I did YouTube. And she's like, oh, my God, did you say YouTube? <laughs> so she popped her head around. She's like, we've been looking for a woman that can be an ambassador for the company and help encourage other women to 
you know, join the industry and join us at RTI. And she's like, we're running this trial thing. Would you like to try out for it? So long story short, I did and ended up getting the position. They so gave, I, they, I was very honest. They gave, they gave you that big, bright uh, breast awareness uh, pink trucker. Are, are, do you? They did. I have felt so over. Oh my god! Do, do you? You? You're not battling cancer, are you? I am not, oh, and I don't have okay. any close friends right now. I've known, I've had friends in the past that did. We had overcome cancer, but it's just I. I see where the trends are going, and right. it's something I'm very passionate about. You know this. We need to find a cure. We need to help those who have yes, cancer. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah. I had a few friends. It, I had a few friends that uh, that lost their life or lost their battle with cancer. My um, my aunt, personally, my aunt, uh, about a year ago, she lost her battle with cancer. Uh, luckily for me, I was. I, I don't know how. I don't know how it made it happen, but. I was able to come the day before she passed. I was able to come and sit down and talk with her. And I was, I was very blessed that I, I was able to get the chance to, you know, say my goodbyes to her and, you know, spend a little bit of, a little bit of time with her. And that, that, you know, I'm sorry for being choked up, but that was, that was very special to me. And then the next day, <clears throat> the next day I get the call from my mom's and she tells me that, you know, my aunt went home. So, you know, so she, she lost her battle with cancer. A friend of a good friend of mine, uh, Shelby Blaine, uh, a couple of years ago, he lost his battle with cancer. And of course, you know, a couple of, a uh, couple of, you know, prominent celebrities like uh, Charlie Murphy, you know, he lost his battle with cancer. So, yeah, we got to make we get we got to make a we got to make cancer, not just breast cancer, all cancer aware. You know what I'm saying? And by you being the ambassador for RTI driving the big pink, big pink truck, I think is 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 letting everybody know about it. Well, thank you. Yeah, I heard a story. I pulled up to a shipping facility to get a load and one of the security guards last just last week pulled me aside and older guy and he just started tearing up and he's like I just wanted to tell you how much your that your truck means to me because and what you're doing because he said I lost my wife I think it was 17 years ago and you know he it was like it happened yesterday you could tell he was so really tore up about it and but it meant so much to him that somebody's trying to raise awareness and you know Art. without the call i guess to you know to find a cure to help help the research and now as so, as no it's really an honor it really is as far as the truck uh as far as the truck goes you um let me see hold on right quick i was trying actually i was trying to pull the picture up but i can't seem to hold on right quick let me see if i can let me see if i can pull the picture up uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I think, uh, I think I got it. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you standing in front of your, uh, your pink truck right there along with others, uh, other females, uh, representing, uh, uh, breast cancer awareness. Um, is, now, is that the only truck that you, that you represent? I could have sworn I read in the article that, there's another truck, a Freightliner? Yes, they they had two pink trucks when I started. And um, I chose the Volvo. And we had, RTI had been looking for a second ambassador. They ultimately wanted two, two of us out on the road. Mm -hmm. And um, I honestly, to tell you the truth, this is so funny. I found out we filled the other truck by reading that article myself. I'm like, really? Really? Could have got a call. Tell, hello, tell, if you're listening. Could have got a call. But anyway, <laughs> no, they did fill the other truck. Great, wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. And she's doing a great job. She's got, I think it's Toya in Pink okay. on Facebook. But yeah, um, doing the same type of thing I am. And 
Just roll. Now you got just, two just, of us roaming the country. Just rolling the country in a bit pink truck representing RTI. How how long uh how long you been working for RTI? So I started early April of last year. So okay. almost almost one year. Okay, okay. So you so eight years in the game, where have you been prior to RTI? What was your experiences prior to RTI? So started out in dry van and um I don't know if you want me do you want me to mention company if, names? I mean that's all it's it's on overview? it's on you if you want to mention companies. I Hey, All up to me. Let, let me go ahead and make to get this disclaimer out right quick. Look, the views of the guests are the views of the guests. It don't necessarily reflect on the views of the host, which is me or the or the podcast itself. So by all means, whoever you want, you know, if you want to mention the company, go ahead. If not, you know, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, you know, this is your experiences. Yeah, I won't I won't mention I won't mention specific negatives about a certain company just so that I'm not trying to bash them. But right. I will say I've worked for Conway, okay. um, Chuck Load, and I actually did appreciate them. They were a good starter company in my opinion. I think Conway um, I think Conway I got br- didn't Conway get brought out? They had about the time I left they got bought out from a Canadian oh, okay. company, I believe. And, yeah, because I don't... And then I've noticed... I noticed lately, they used to be CFI, right? And then, you know, Conway Freighters, blah, blah, blah. But it was CFI. They changed it to Conway, got bought out. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed that they returned all the CFI back on the truck. So I don't know if there was another buyout or exactly what happened. Yeah, I'm not I'm not yeah. sure about... I'm not sure about that either. I... I you know, I'm the more and more I I investigate trucking companies, the more and more I figure I, I find out that they're all up under the same umbrella. You know, when I talked to when I talked to what was that PNS, I found out they was associated mm-hmm. with with Party Brothers, and then you know, of course, US Express is associated with Total, uh, with Total, and. And Ar- well, they was associated with Arnold, but I think they gave, I think they gave Arnold back. But yeah, all these, all these trucking companies, you know, are up under one umbrella. Like, wow, I, I didn't even know that. Hell, half of the companies that I think that's shutting down, technically are not shutting down. They're just, they just shutting down operations that they're doing, and then just flipping all other operations over to somebody else to to run it up under a different name exactly i believe that as well i mean look at the woman you're interviewing from the company the recruiter she didn't even know how many companies yeah like that they had exactly I mean, so it's, it's like the cell phone companies you know look what they're doing they put out a new smaller company where all these parks and kind of see what works exactly if it goes out of business it doesn't hurt their name exactly you know, you, know you got you you got these small you got these small uh cell phone companies that's bouncing off just that's, that's bouncing off the network like metro pcs is bouncing off a t-mobile network then you got another one that's bouncing off a verizon network so you you just you just don't know you you know of the four majors you know what i'm saying but they got they they got many means in different markets that you didn't even know that they was associated with i didn't know that metro pcs was associated with uh t-mobile you know but dude i had i had no clue yeah but do they but do they say that now they now they say that you know now they say that back then they didn't you know, they didn't say that, but now they say that they're associated with it. Uh, all right, so go ahead and continue. Uh, what what are the companies that you, you worked for total before you got with RTI? I worked for Hogan mm-hmm. out of St. Louis or City, Missouri. I'm familiar um, with Hogan. Pretty good company. Yeah. Um, and then I worked for a mom and pop company out in the out in western Kansas, and they were doing a lot of oil field stuff, but I found a nice little position. It wasn't too bad. It was where you just bring chemical out to the oil site. Mm-hmm. And so you, did, you didn't actually have to work on the wells or anything like that. Oh, you can't, uh, I, can't, I, I kind of lose you. I'm, I'm kind of losing you there. You. I, my headset's probably 
Hang on, let me switch. Yes, yeah, sw- yeah, right. switch over to the phone. Yeah, I'm losing you. Come on, headset. Come on now. Okay, can you hear me? All right, take you. You got me on speaker. Take me off a of speaker. Because if I'm on speaker, it sounds like um, I'm under. It sounds like you're underwater. Let me see. Okay. How how is it so bad? Yeah, you you still got me on speaker? You don't have me No, I'm on the hard uh plug in. Hey, let me unplug it to plug it back in, John. But no, just Brittany, just use your phone you know, you might have to just put your phone up against your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Still sound bad. All right, you sound better. You sound a little bit better right there. So you okay, you, you, so you got your you got your phone up against good. your ear. Oh, well, I've got my uh, iPhone earbud in right now. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's cool. We'll we'll work we'll work with that. We'll work with that. You the American trucker, so we're gonna work with whatever you got. <laughs> well, hopefully, it's good. Yeah, that's. I don't want to give you crappy audio. That's cool. Yeah. It's always hard when the phone cuts. When the phone cuts out, you're trying to have a conversation with somebody. And you're like, oh, exactly. I want to be polite, but I miss how you said. Exactly, so. exactly. Um, so okay, so you mentioned that you worked for. Uh, was it just the one mom and pop company that you worked for? Or you worked for several mom and pop companies. I've worked for several. Um, I. I started with Hogan actually after the mo- first mom and pop company. And that was honestly a great experience. I got really lucky, especially being oil filled. You know how that can be. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone was great there. Okay. I came I- back to Kansas city and got into, Oops. How- are you back? There you go. I'm back. How, how do you feel? What, what, what do you feel that's the difference between a mom and pop company and a, and a, and a major company? standard <laughs> okay i i say that in general um you, you don't necessarily know what you're getting with a mom and pop for one there's less reviews right mm-hmm. you know you check the trucking forums it's like nobody's ever heard of them and as i found out when i had some bad experiences with some mom and pops later on is that these mom and pops as soon as their csa score drops and they get in trouble with dot they just changed the company name and switch everything to a brand new company. Wow. Same setup. Yes. The company I worked for switched three times when I got back to Kansas City mm-hmm. and had kind of my negative experience. And I mean, they were running two logs, one log for one company, and then the ask drivers switch over to the other log for the other companies so that you can work extra hours. Of course, I refused, which put me on the cop list but Brittany there so when stirring up trouble but I I ran legal so I get um, um you know I talked to an old school driver that uh that you know back in the day that was that was the norm mm-hmm. running two laws you know and up under two di- up under two different names but the same owner though that's wow that's crazy how are they able to pull that off I do not know all right, so that's so that's so that's definitely the difference between between the two right there, huh? Yeah, but it, I mean, if you can find like my first experience with small and pop in the oil field, you know, everybody else said you know, oil field companies are horrible, blah 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 blah. I happened to find the diamond, and they were great, honest, hardworking people. Um, so you you never know. I mean, if you find the right mom and pop who run honestly care about their people it's a family environment it's wonderful like it's great but you get one of those bad ones and it's all drama and they will run you into the ground um before i left my um my uh, jordan's dad actually had a heart attack and Mm -hmm. they were running him over hours didn't give him a break they kept calling him all hours of the night and i'm like he's not in a good position right now with his stress and his heart and he had a heart attack almost wrecked and died so wow. i mean that was my last draw i'm like no you guys are done i'm gone 
Wow. That's woo. That's uh Woo. That's 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 hard. That's that's tough right there. That's tough and I'm sorry to hear that. So how did you uh so 8 years ago uh you 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 went through a training you went to a truck driving school to obtain your license, right? Mhm, I did. How? I Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. No, I was about to say how 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 did you how how was your first time feeling when you when you got behind the truck by yourself? Um, terrifying. <laughs> terrifying and exciting at the same time. It's like a mix of all these ambivalent emotions, but um it, I was excited for the challenge of it, and but yeah, I remember my first road test because um, we do a lot of in-house road tests before the main CDL, mm-hmm. you know, test and everything, and um, it was terrifying. I was so nervous, but I played it cool, took a deep breath, focused, and that's what helped get me through. Is it? I I've noticed like. We have this habit of asking the why question, right? We make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? But our brains are designed to answer the the questions you ask. So if you're asking yourself, why did I do something stupid or why am I so stupid? Your brain's going to come up with the answers for why you're stupid. And so I focus on how can I get through this? You know, what do I need to focus on while I'm in school? And that gave me the drive and focus to get through and make it successfully. So. Okay, that's what's up. That is what's up. So how do you feel about so how do you feel about being a female in a male dominated industry? I was actually shocked. I fully expected that I'm gonna get catcalled constantly, that I'm gonna get harassed. Um I fully expected problems. Like I was looking over my shoulder all the time, mm-hmm. worried about somebody jumping me or attacking, which you should keep your head on the swivel. I mean I don't want to um, downplay that, but no, you no, you don't I'm downplay I mean, no, don't are, downplay that at all. No, you you you're absolutely you're yeah. absolutely right, especially for safety for safety sakes. You know what I'm saying? You know you gotta you you gotta you know constantly be vigilant of where where you at. You know because ain't no telling ain't no telling what will happen to you. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of guys that, you yeah. know, a lot of guys see these females walking in the, you know, walking in the truck stops, you know, half of them think that they're not truck drivers at all. They think they're, you know, they're females. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Right. Right. So, so with that in mind, yeah. so with that in mind, so with that in mind, what's the hardest thing women face in the industry? You know, I think it's different or I mean it's, I, I don't think I could generalize that because it's, everybody has a different experience you know I had a background in law enforcement so I already had kind of a I don't know I've dealt with a lot of crap you know I've been in riot situations and shootings and seen people gassed open and it's so I kind of got broken pretty good with that but mm-hmm. um, you know I think emotionally it's probably probably the toughest is when you're first starting out, you know, most of the time, unless you get really lucky, you're going to be over the road. You're going to probably be by, by yourself. I mean, unless you're teaming with somebody or bring your significant other. Right. And it's being alone. It's being alone out there going from the family life and, you know, being close to everybody you love. And now you find yourself in New York and nobody around. And it's like, who do I trust out here? You know, so it's probably one of the toughest things, at least initially, that we have to deal with. Gotcha. How do you keep your how, how so? How do you keep yourself occupied aside from driving? What do you do? What What do you What do you do to keep yourself from not from not burning yourself out with this YouTube thing? Uh, not getting bored in the truck. What 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 do you do? Mm-hmm. So I. I watch, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I love them. They are a lifesaver when going down the road. Keeps my mind intuitive and inquisitive. And um, I'll listen to documentaries, Mm -hmm. you know, and try to learn different things. And those things, just having a little quiet time, reading a book, listening to an audiobook, those things really refuel me as a person. Um, 
also, as far as the social connection side goes, you know, having Facebook, having, um, being able to call people, look at, you know, in the seventies, you didn't have a cell phone that right. you could just call somebody. You had to wait and get to a truck stop, a pay phone, get some quarters out. And sit in that, sit so in that pay phone booth, all really sit in that pay phone booth all hours of the day, just talking to your significant other or your family. You know, the technology that we got today is is far cry than uh, than what it was back in the day. But but there's a double edged sword. There is a double edged sword to this uh, to this to this uh, technology thing. This technology thing made us lo- uh, made us made us truck drivers lazy. I mean, I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say, but. It really has. I mean, I, I can't say that I never that I have fell into the in, into it. You know, I, I got a GPS. You know what I'm saying? I got a computer. Mm-hmm. I got an automatic. You know what I'm saying? Back then, mm-hmm. back then, drivers didn't have that. You know, I read an article. I read an article somewhere that they said that it was less accidents back in the day just by drivers driving a manual than it is today by drivers driving an automatic. What, what's your take on that? Really? You know, my, my first question would be, I wonder, I wonder why that is. Are they just maybe less focused on the road? Exactly. Yeah. I, 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 or, would think, I, I would think it is because, you know, driving a manual – of course, you got to be focused. You know, you your hand, your uh, your right hand is constantly shifting. Your left leg is constantly moving. You know, double clutching. Got to make sure that you know what you got to make sure you're in the right gear. You got to downshift to you know to match the speed. So maybe, maybe. That can, you know, being with all that additional activity that you're doing, you're not, you're, you're focusing on, you more focus on the road than not. Because, you know, some drivers that's, that's, that driving automatics, you see them going down the road, they got their leg up on the dashboard, they got, uh, they got their TV, they got their, their DVD player and the dashboard. They got, uh, you know, they're they're just not being focused. You know, I've seen I've seen one video that I did way back in the day where the dude was driving with both of his feet. Now, and he had his limbs, he had his hands, he had his arms. I thought, you know, back then, I thought that you know he didn't have arms, and I thought he was like one of them, one of them special kind of truckers. You know what I'm saying? Just because I got a handicap, right. just because I got a handicap, doesn't mean that I can't drive a truck. But dude, dude had his hands and his legs, but he's driving, driving down the street with 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 his feet on the steering wheel. Oh my god! And it, it, it's cra- that is it is. It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy like that that they that they was uh that he was doing that. So I'm thinking like you know going back to that article, I'm thinking to myself like I, I, I'm gonna have to agree. I I'm really am. Yeah, I mean I I agree with you. I think it's a lot of truth to that. You know, and like you said, it's double-edged sword because look at, like, my truck, for instance, has the automatic, if you set the crew, it has an automatic um, LIDAR, radar, whatever it is, distancer. So it makes sure I stay at, like, seven, eight seconds behind other vehicles, and it will immediately start slowing me down. Oh, you got that. Now, see, that's that's what I hate. mm, Hold on. That's what I hate. You got the Dandad system. When I first saw it, I hated it. <laughs> but I actually love it because, it, as you know, you know, and I know from the law enforcement side, when you get a vehicle so so much, you know, such a distance away, you can't necessarily judge its speed or, or how much it's slowing down. You may just think they're reducing a little bit, and all of a sudden you're, like, right up on them. So I like it. I mean, personally, I think it's a great safety aspect it helps me keep in check i i'm really impatient okay <laughs> i'm sure a lot of the drivers are this way you know you're trying to get through traffic you're trying to get through the city mm-hmm. and 
you know, I don't pay enough attention to my following distance, you know, in those cases. And once I got this truck, you know, it really helped me calm down, just set the cruise, stay focused on your mirrors. And, you know, if traffic flows, it's going to slow me down accordingly. And the other thing that helps too, and I learned this in Smith's system. And once again, I was skeptical, but here's what I like about Smith's system, mm-hmm. psychology. If you distance yourself from traffic around you, create like a little face cushion. Mm-hmm. Psychologically, people are past animals. They pack together. They will leave you alone. They will avoid you like the plague, and you will have this blank space in the middle of rush hour, you know, all around you. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. How did you, what, Brittany? How how did you know you wanted to become a trucker? What what compelled you to to, to come into the industry? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't for sure. Um, I will tell you this, though, when I was on the fire department, the first time I got in that fire truck, got in that tanker and then ladder truck, we had a snorkel truck, too. And um, it was an old cab over, too. Oh, my God, it was so much fun to drive. But, you know, ran a call in that. And I I just love the feel of the feel and talent of tackling a big truck. And then everybody's reaction, like, whenever I get out, they're like, that was a woman driving that truck. Oh my God. So, you know, and I kind of got burned out on the law enforcement side. The hardest thing for me was not necessarily even the day to day drama. Mm-hmm. It was more the internal drama with a lot of departments, you know, a lot of don't pull this person over because they're related to the chief. And I just hated that. I'm like, I'm going to treat people fairly. I'll give them a break. I can give them a break. And, I kind of got tired of that crap, so I started looking for other industries, and I'm like, I saw a couple drivers on YouTube, mm-hmm. and I, I don't remember the guy's name, but um, he was documenting a week in his life as a truck driver, and it just, it looks so much more relaxing, you know, you're, once, as long as you're getting from point A to point B safely, the rest of the time is yours. You got relaxation in the truck. You're you're not constantly having your radio radio going off. Hey, fight in progress mm-hmm. or shots fired over here. And it just it sounded nice. It sounded like kind of a nice vacation. Plus, it paid more. So I that's when I decided I'm going to give it a try. You know? Okay. Was there other than that? Was there anybody that inspired you? You know maybe somebody from YouTube or, or somebody that, uh, somebody that inspired you to, uh, to, uh, jump in the truck. Who was it? Later on, it was Ollie Knight, (sighs) but I had been in truck driving a few years, but I, I did really enjoy what I enjoyed about Ollie Knight was her goofiness. Yes. You know how she was able to show facts of day-to-day life and trucking, but also she she was humorous. She was funny. And that kind of inspired me to start a YouTube. And you know what? I'm just going to document my night and see how things go. And if people like it, great. Now, you know, <laughs> Allie, you, you know, Allie Knight, she she kind of fell off there a little bit. She she just came. She came back. She came back. But she fell off a little bit. You know, and you know she 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 tried to do the the van life, I think. Uh, then her and her significant other got a house, and they tried to do the house thing. But uh, but she just mm-hmm. recently came back in came back into the industry and started back doing her vlogs. So so yeah, Allie Knight. She, I noticed that she was uh she she was big she was big. Um, she was big back, you know, back then. I I follow her. I mean, I'm I'm subscribed to her as well. So she uh, mm-hmm. she was one of the one of the females that I was uh, interested in um, interested in back in the day. You know, she was quirky. She was funny. You know, hello internet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so yeah, she was uh she she was uh, top of her game, and then uh, all of a sudden she. Started she stepped away from the limelight. I guess she did a, I guess she did a Dave Chappelle. I guess it kind of got to her and she had to, 
<laughs> had to run away. You know, Dave Chappelle, Martin Lawrence. You know what I'm saying? They all had to, all had to step back for a minute and be and and rejuvenate themselves. Mm-hmm. Do you think that will? Do you think that would ever happen to you? You you think you're gonna have to step away from the limelight a little bit to cat to to rejuvenate? I'm not sure because at this point, doing the least purchase, the times I do get burnt out, I'm like, you know what, guys, I'm taking a week off and going on vacation. <laughs> there you go. And it's, so it's been great. It's been great. But one of that was actually one of the reasons of me changing the name to American Truckers mm-hmm. and then setting up a personal blog channel. Mm-hmm. Because personally, I respect Ali, everything. I, I was disappointed in the way that she suddenly just changed the whole channel yeah and now it's her and her boyfriend in rv and i think i think it really hurt a lot of her audience it did and it did i don't want to ever be that person if i ever did something else i want to keep american truckers and i want to keep focus on you know the life of truck drivers on the road and i want to be a part of that whether it's at home you know if i eventually retire or whatnot you know i want to be a part of the whole thing so that's something i i don't want to radically change that channel you know a lot of a lot of drivers try to radically change their channels and they and they uh i'm i don't get me wrong i i I fell into it you know i i tried to radically change my channel and i figured you know maybe i can do this and i can pull in a little bit more diverse people and all like that but I, i i sat back relaxed and figure out what my viewers and my listen my, now my listeners what they was looking for in in me and what they was and what they was inspecting of me you know i can do a I, I can do a little bit i can do a little reaction or here that there and the other but they're not coming here for you know funny clips or reactions or anything like that they come in here for the they come in here for the education they come in here for the for the for for the tr- uh for the trucking information 90 you know 10% 10% of it i'll say I, i'll say 75 so 75% of you know 75% of it is 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 content the other 25% is the character of that person so your content probably might not be good but if your character is that's what they're going to come for you see what i'm saying that is so true so true. So I've seen a lot. Yeah, I mean, but look at. Mm-hmm. Oh, go no, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead, ladies on, face. You know, ladies first. Go ahead. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, Jeff does this with Amazon. You know, he had said from the beginning, let's focus on the customer and work our way backwards. Look at where they've gone. You know, and Sam Walton, I've got his book in here, Made in America, and he did the same thing. Now, whatever the controversy, I understand the controversy mm-hmm. with, well, it's putting small business out. Not even touching that subject at all. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, like you said, if you focus on your audience and helping people and giving them what they're looking for, you know, it's, that's it. That's it right that's there. That's exactly. And I think that's how, you know, no matter how many subscribers you have, you know, because it it is it is what it is with subscribers you know what i'm saying some people just hit that button and just just to be hitting it and forget all about you but when you got your loyalists you know the ones that will come back and follow you and support you then those are the ones that you should cater more to exactly it's so true all right all right yeah i agree oh. i agree completely before i forget i was going to say i just found that first YouTuber that I had ever seen that drove a truck, and he's the first one that inspired me. I didn't see any women that time um, back then, but his name was Journey95 on YouTube. I don't even think he makes YouTube videos anymore. But I really got, I mean, I owe a lot of things to him because he really inspired me. He kind of, I know, I'm going to say a bad name. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> he looked, he looked he kind of looked like a cop and, you know, I've been to law enforcement. And so I was like, Hey, you know, let's take a look at his videos. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. I kind of like the rhythm and the flow of how his trucking life's going. You know, I could see myself potentially doing that. 
So huge shout out to Journey ninety five. I Journey ninety five. Shout right? out to him. Let me let me see. You say Journey ninety five. Let's see. Hold on, like quick. Let me see mm-hmm. if I can. Let me see if I can bring him up. Hold on. Journey ninety. Oh wait, you gotta need the gonna need the information on that. Hold on. Hold on. You gotta go back. There we go. Journey ninety five. Hold on. Let's clear that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say Journey 95 on YouTube, right? Correct. All right, let me see if I can. Oh, yeah, there he is. Small subscriber. Don't don't look like, the, let me see, look like the last, uh, look like the, look like the last video is nine years ago. Ten, whoa, nine years ago. So, yeah, he. Yeah, looks like it. Wow. Uh, he got a he got a small. Oh wow! I thought he had, I thought he had a huge following. But yeah, well at that well at that oh time God. he got he got close to he got close to four thousand mm-hmm. subscribers, but uh, his last his mm-hmm. last upload received forty three k and and that was nine years ago. So yeah, like I said, sometimes this YouTube this this YouTube thing really can burn a lot of a lot of drivers out, and it it, it could really turn them away. You know, whatever whatever the case may be, you know, whatever. Shout out to uh, Journey ninety five, but whatever the case may be that that turns you off from YouTube is crazy. It's drama going on right now between um, between uh, Mark Anthony Storm. That's wow. That's right there. Woo. Mm. That, oh really? Yeah. I was I wasn't familiar. Yeah, with that. he uh, he made some disparaging allegations against a against a driver a driver youtuber name uh makes sense um i i talked about it in my podcast it's it's um it's uh mark ant it, it's titled mark anthony storm so whenever you get a chance go ahead and check it out all right Brittany. so before we get up out of here will. before we get up out of here i don't want to take too much of your time i want to go ahead and i got some quick questions for you some sharp fire questions for you Let's see if you're ready for this. All right. Let's see if you're ready for this. All right. All right. So, do you sleep with the heat on or, or with the AC on? AC, even in the winter. Even, even in the winter. <laughs> cash cash or card? Uh, card. Card. Ice cream cone or waffle? Ice cream cone or, oh, my God. How about both waffle? Oh, uh, you say, oh, you say, put it together and make it one, huh? Waffle cone, all the there way. There you go. In Austin, yes. All right, so you know these truck stops don't have that much as far as food goes. So McDonald's or Arby's? Arby's. Uh, what? Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. It's the curly fries and their horsey sauce. <sighs> I love their horsey sauce. Arby's, call me. Call me. You say Arby's <laughs> call you. No, I, I can't, me- I, I can't mess. I can't mess with. I can't mess with Arby's. But it looks like every time I come down to Texas, it's like every other loves has a freaking Arby's in it. And I'm like, dude, can I can I get a Hardee's or a McDonald's? I want a sausage egg and muffin for mm-hmm. in the morning, man. Come on now, come on. All right, what? Oh yeah, you can't beat it. Either. All right, so your taste in music, Mary J. Blige. Or Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. All right, all right. Prince or Michael Jackson? Ooh, probably Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Okay, okay. What do you What do you say the most? Pop or soda? Um, soda. Soda. There you go. There yeah, you go. Soda. <laughs> all right. Hulu or Netflix? Uh, Netflix, but only because I haven't yet checked out Hulu. Oh, okay, so what? it may be better. You, I don't you, know. you need to get hip to Hulu. Got got to get hip to you Hulu. I got all of them. Hulu, hip to Hulu. Hulu, Prime, Roku, uh, uh, 
Amazon Prime, all that. I, I got them all. So if it's something on there that I can't find to watch, I know there's something to find to watch. Right now I'm catching right now I'm catching up on my Better Call Saul episodes. So I am a big breaking bad fan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> all right, Brittany. <laughs> so what's uh let me see if I can bring this up right quick before I ask. So I can be ready for it. Hold on. Here we go. Hit that. Let me see if it'll if it'll bring it up because you don't mind. Uh oh. Okay. Well, you know what? I guess I can't bring it up. But since I can't bring it up, all right. So how can they? So how can my listeners and everybody else find you on? Uh, find you. Probably the easiest way right now. I am working on a website. It's going to integrate kind of all the platforms, so it's easy to find me. But American Truckers on YouTube, American Trucker, or Brittany Richardson on YouTube. All right, that is the easiest way to find me. Or uh, Brittany and Pink on Facebook. Easy to remember. All right, so we got Brittany. We got American Truckers on YouTube. We got Brittany and Pink on YouTube, and Brittany and Pink on. Brittany. Oh wait. Oh, Brittany Richardson. Br- on YouTube. There you go. All right, my bad, my Everybody bad. And pink on Facebook. And uh, Insta Good. and Instagram. You you got an Instagram? I do. Yeah, same thing. Brittany and Pink. I also have you know my blog stuff on uh, Instagram as well okay. under Brittany Richardson. So all right, they pretty much if they search for any of those terms, they're gonna find me somewhere. All right. Well, Brittany and Pink. Thank you very much for showing up and showing out on my show. I appreciate you. Hold on, let me give you a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah, Brittany, Brittany. So thank you very much for uh, coming on the podcast, man. I really do appreciate it. You are very welcome. You're going to have to PM me or something and get me connected with that little applause button <laughs> <laughs> i will definitely i'll 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 definitely try to I'll, de- I'll see if i can send it to you because it's integrated in my uh in my podcast setup my uh my my hardware but you know it's a button that i push and it just gives you that applause oh, that's awesome. <laughs> i love that all right Brittany. <laughs> well thank you very much definitely don't be no stranger if you guys want to come on the podcast just like my lady Brittany and pink did you can hit me up in the podcast by hit me up in the gmail by hitting by hitting me up i know i said it like three times but i'm just excited because i i finally got a hold of uh miss Brittany and pink and she decided to come and show me some love so you guys if you want to come on hit me up at lockout podcast at gmail.com you can hit me up at the uh in the dm over in instagram or just leave a comment in the in the comment below let me know that you're interested in coming on and uh and Boom. I'll have you on. I'll set you up and we'll chop it up. You know what again? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Again, Brittany and Pink. American Trucker. You guys go check her out on uh, American Trucker on YouTube. And until then, until next time, I give you guys another, another, another podcast interview thank you Brittany, for showing up i really do appreciate you you are now the lom community you are very welcome it was my pleasure all right now you take it easy you stay safe out there and everybody else we are gone